So what I want to do today, I want to get a bead in behind here. I'm going to clamp it down first. I'm going to get some fire going here. You should have just cut it. I'm thinking I can use an iron. An actual, like, what you would press your clothes with, iron. I'm gonna try the iron. Let's see how that works. I'm gonna cut a little bit of this down because what I wanna end up doing is heating up this edge so that it'll curl down and actually adhere to the inside of the weir. Uh, using a fire, using fire just wasn't, you couldn't control it. So I'm just gonna try and, uh, and do a bit of cutting here. Now when I'm looking at that, it's a nice flat surface that when I apply an iron to it, I'll be able to, I hope, curl all that down and melt it all together. So I'm just going to put the heat right on this and hopefully be able to melt everything all, all in one piece. And yeah, I'm using a... Uh, in industry approved ultra high super hot uh black and decker iron Jeez. i really don't know how much heat this is going to give it's actually going to be enough to uh to melt it we're gonna see i could be here all day Yep, let's just leave the heat on it. I'm gonna put a bit more heat onto this. I wanna wanna make that weld happen. And I think if I can just roll this over, I'll be able to melt two pieces together there. Melt this right into there. And I'm just gonna watch it until the seam the open gap gets filled in. Ideally, if I had a very, very hot blade that I could slide in between the two of them and heat both the pieces of plastic at the same time, it would be a much more effective way to weld. Okay. I'm going to carry on doing this the rest of the day. Okay. So we got it all cut all the way through here. So uh, I don't want you guys to think I'm cheating or anything. And that's one of the biggest things I see when I'm doing videos is mistakes get edited out. That's not the way I want to do stuff here. I want to, I want to be honest with, you, with the, everybody who's watching the videos so that if I run into trouble, I, I want to I want to show you that so that you don't run into the same trouble, or if you do run into the same trouble, at least together we can we can work it through and and solve it. So I've cut away everything, and I'm just going to bit by bit get this so that it's secure. Now the next thing I'm going to end up doing because I can I can see it happening now. Is I think I'm going to have to uh, get the fire going again only because I need some liquid I need something that's going to be liquid and I'm I'm just saying that this this iron is just isn't cutting it it's not not heating up enough
Okay, so done all the good stuff. I actually went through and I, I used some liquid polyethylene just by melting the rod. So I would be melting some of this and, and letting it run in to the gaps. Uh, sure feels a lot more secure here. I'm going to end up doing this. I'm going to flip it over again and do it again. But uh, I'm going to just get my wheel here and I'm going to clean up some of this edge so that I'll... Uh, it's just because I want it to look good. If I can get most of the rust stuff off the top of this, it's going to reduce turbulence. And then you're going to get a much more even flow because if I have water having to go over bumps and, and ridges and things of that nature, it creates turbulence. Then you don't get a nice even flow. So I'm just kind of kind of trying to make it nice. That's yeah, going to be just fine like that. It is. I want like a half an inch thick of water coming out of here. So to do that, I have to actually, you know, put a side up this. Otherwise, it'll just flow off this end as well. So while this is still hot, it just came out of the oven just like just now. What I want to do is I want to shape it so that it takes the exact shape that I want. Plastic is uh, one of those things that can eventually, it will, will, if I can keep it keep it in this shape while it cools, it'll stay there. So, but I'll be notching it and cutting this piece like a crazy man, because you see here, I want it to be like this. I want to have to cut that out of there so that it it conforms in this edge just down there because I, I need something there solid to weld it on and so quite simply this is what I want it to, to uh, conform to just like that so that as the water comes out it'll stay within the boundaries of that so I'm just going to tack weld it here Now to weld it in here, get a, a broad flame going here. I'm gonna set some plastic on fire. Once this is tacked on enough, I can, enough to hold itself, then I can go back and I can fill the gaps. Now these sides, I think all I'm going to do is, once plastic catches fire, it'll burn until it's all evaporated. See how it's, it's dripping, dripping fire. I want to get that in here while it's molten, because if it's molten, it'll, it'll stick to both sides and become like a glue. Okay, so we're going to let that cool with the clamps on. It'll probably be about 20, 30 minutes and let that cool because the plastic becomes stronger as it gets colder. So we have these side pieces on, welded to the uh, spillway lip. Everything looks pretty good. That's how we took an old lawn roller and converted it to a waterfall weir, a waterfall spillway. Can't wait to see it in the pond.